Hello and welcome back to my studio. In today's video, we are going to be trying to make whipped soap, but we're going to be doing something special for today's video. We're going to be making that whipped soap base from scratch. I'm going to show you just how easy it is and how quickly it can come together, as well as show you how to use that base to make the most beautiful, creamy whipped soap. So let's get started. I've waited this long to make whipped soap because I never really used it for myself when it comes to my skincare routine. I never really thought that I needed whip soap because I really like bar soap, which is hard. <laughs> but after hearing so many good things about how nice it feels and how great it is to use when you shave, I decided to give it a go. And I love whip soap now. I can't get enough. So to make the whip soap base, we're gonna be using two different surfactants. The first one being SCI powder. SCI stands for sodium cocal isothionate. And it's this really gentle anionic surfactant. You can see how it kicks up in the air like that. So be careful when you're using it. I'm okay if I step back a little bit, but some people might find it a little bit too much. So definitely use a mask if it irritates you when you breathe it in. I accidentally used SLSA one time to make this base and it wasn't good, it wasn't the same. So definitely use SCI powder and not SLSA. The great thing about making your own base too is that you can use it for so many different things. You can use it for the whip soap, like I mentioned, but also as a base for your sugar scrubs. We're going to have to melt all of this SCI down so that it can incorporate with the other ingredients. And to do that, we're gonna be using a crock pot. So I'm just going to be putting this SCI powder into the crock pot that I have here. To give not only the foaming base some body, but also any products that we choose to make with that base, we're gonna be using some stearic acid. And this will help keep the structure of not only the base, but anything you make with it stable and together. And this is important when you're shipping products in the mail and when you expose this product to heat. Does it make this heat proof? It doesn't. And I wouldn't advise shipping these whip soaps during the summertime. I know big companies that pull their whip soaps when the weather gets hot because of this reason. So we mentioned SCI as one of the surfactants. The next surfactant is a liquid one. This is cocomidal propyl betaine. This is another amazing, gentle surfactant. It's compatible with SCI powder and the two together make for some really great bubbles. To keep the foaming bath base from being too dry, we're gonna add some glycerin, which is a powerful and amazing humectant. Draws moisture to the skin and helps keep it there. So we're gonna be adding some distilled water and it's important to use distilled water because it doesn't have any of the impurities and minerals that tap water has. So we are going to be melting this down. I will come and check on it and stir it every now and then, but because SCI takes so long to melt and you really wanna melt this guy thoroughly, a crock pot is the way to go, at least for me. I actually found this crock pot at a garage sale so if you are needing a crock pot of any kind, I highly recommend you check out some garage sales because I found at least five being sold, all for like 10, 20 bucks. We're gonna set this on higher heat, give it a bit of a stir to get it going. And we're gonna check on this every now and then and continue to give it a stir as it melts down. But what you're looking for is that this mixture becomes completely smooth. You want all of that stearic acid to melt down. You don't want little stearic acid granules in your products. So this is super important. So I'm just gonna go ahead and leave this be and let this melt down and come back once it's ready to move on to the next step. So it's been about 20 minutes or so. Whenever you're using the crock pot to heat anything, make sure you check up on it every now and then. You can see that the SEI has melted nicely and the mixture is looking pretty liquid. What you're looking for here is a very smooth consistency. You don't want any of those SCI beads unmelted. Otherwise you'll feel them in your finished product, which if you're making a scrub, that doesn't really matter, but we wanna make a nice smooth whipped soap. So we wanna make sure that all of that stearic acid has gone away. This is why I like the crock pot so much. You can melt things evenly and if you use the right settings, you're not going to scorch your mixture. 
If I tried doing this in a double boiler, it would take so long. So I'm just giving it a good stir. And now we're gonna see how smooth it is because if there's any unmelted stearic, you'd feel it. And it feels pretty darn smooth. So I think we are good. So now that everything has melted, you're just going to allow this to cool down so that we can add our preservative to it. We have water in the sky, so it's prone to growing bacteria if you just leave it be. A broad spectrum preservative will help keep the space shelf stable and good to use for months. So we're just going to let this cool down and once this gets below 160 degrees Fahrenheit, then we can add our Optifin Plus, give it another good stir and then allow it to continue solidifying. It shouldn't, uh, shouldn't take too long. Okay, it's at like 163. So it'll probably be good to add the Optifin in less than 10 minutes. So let's be patient. It's been about 10 minutes. Let's go check on our, on our foaming bath whip temp. Yes, we are a good temp. I like using Optifin for this type of product because of the high heat. Any cooler and the foaming bath whip is going to get harder. It might be a little bit more difficult to incorporate the preservative. But we're going to transfer the foaming bath whip to this other container first. Just to make it easier, I'm just going to add our preservative. We're going to stir. This will begin to solidify on you. That is okay. So now that the Optifin is all incorporated, we're going to just let this cool down. If you are making a big batch of this for later use, what you could do is whip it up and then store it in a bucket. I like to use any one of the buckets that I get my oils in. Any of those buckets with a really tight lid and take some as I need. While it's sitting, I'm going to cover it so that it doesn't lose any moisture. So as it cools down, continues to solidify, I'm gonna keep it covered. And once it is completely cooled down, then we're gonna go ahead and whip it. So we are back and the foaming bath base has had a chance to settle down. So we are going to move forward, whip it up, add our oils, and turn this base into a whipped soap. First, we're going to transfer the bath whip to my KitchenAid bowl that's where I'm going to whip it. You can see that the bath whip has stiffened up quite a bit, which is a great texture to whip up into a nice fluffy cloud-like consistency. To enhance the feel of this whip soap, we're gonna be adding an oil, and I'm gonna be using apple seed oil that I got from Brambleberry. You can use any light, fast, absorbing oil. With fall just around the corner, I wanted this whip soap to have some strong fall vibes. So the fragrance oils that I chose was S'mores by the Fire by Kulig Aromatique. And I'm gonna blend that with pumpkin honey chai to make a marshmallow chai fragrance. Anything I scented in pumpkin honey chai last fall sold like crazy. I had people in my Etsy inbox demanding I make more of the body butter that I made using this scent. It's it's lovely. It has a top note of nuts, a middle note of vanilla, milk, and honey, and a bottom note of cinnamon, clove, nutmeg, and black chai. I'm not the biggest fan of my body care products smelling like food, and this is bordering on that. But when these fall scents have that spicy undertone, I'm all about it. It's when that fall scent starts to have a pastry vibe to it. <laughs> I can't do it. It's just too much. S'mores by the fire is the perfect marshmallow smell. I love that so much, oh my gosh. There's a little bit of sweet vanilla, but there's something bright in there. I can't put my finger on it, but apparently S'mores by the fire is one of Kulig Aromatique's bestsellers. I have a link to both of those down below. And another thing that I'm going to add to our whipped soap is a little bit more preservative. The amount of preservative that I added before was just enough for the base, but if I'm going to make other things, with that base, I'm gonna be adding more ingredients, so we need to top off the preservative so that it covers all of the extra that we're adding. 
So that's about it. Let's go ahead and whip this up. Here's the final consistency of that whipped soap and it is light it is fluffy but it's not too soft and what I mean by that is it's gonna have some nice body to it so if you ship it it's gonna stay this way it's not going to fold and collapse in and on itself you can compromise the integrity of your whipped soap if you whip it for too long so what you're aiming for is for the whip to grow a little bit to whip up a little bit but not too too much so now we're gonna add color to our whip. It's gonna be white and an orange to match with the chai theme. I don't know why I have two bowls actually. That should be fine, just the one. I'm going to separate about half of it into the bowl. And here, I'm gonna color it with a blend of orange sherbet mica and super sparkle bronze mica. Let's add the orange mica like so. That is so pretty. I feel like I'm gonna be using a lot of this mica in the next coming projects. And then here is the bronze. Oh, look how beautiful that is. Definitely giving off some fall vibes. Okay, let's bring you a little bit closer. So we're just going to fold the color into the soap and mix it to integrate it until we don't see any more mica streaks. Oh, that smells so good. Oh my gosh, that scent in a candle or even a, a lotion would be divine. So we get this really pretty pale orange color. Make sure you scrape down the side so that you don't have any hidden mica pockets. So now we are going to pipe to get the best, neatest effect. We're just gonna be piping into our jars. To whoever introduced me to press and seal, thank you so much. You have made my piping life a lot easier. So we're gonna spread our press and seal in front of us, and then we're just going to add our oops, soap in a line. As evenly as possible. Starting with the orange. Then we're going to grab our white, our white, foaming scrub, or sorry, our white whipped soap. The cost to make this foaming bath base is not that different from buying it pre-made, to be honest with you. It's pretty comparable. It's, it might be slightly cheaper, but if you're crunched for time, you can go ahead and buy the base. It's very, very similar. It's called foaming bath whip, and most soap suppliers sell it. But there's something about making your own from scratch. It's pretty satisfying and you can really control the ingredients that are in it. There's some peace of mind there. Okay, so that is all of my whipped soap. I'm going to fold this in on itself. Close the burrito. I'm using this reusable piping bag that I got from Fizz Fairy, and I love that it's reusable. Just wash it in between uses. I'm just gonna use this tip that I've never used before. If there's an official name for it, let me know in the comments below. I'm just going to feed my whip soap into my piping bag. For jars, I'm using these straight-sided glass jars. To pipe, you just go in like so. And 
just pipe into your jar. Just like that. How pretty does that look? So here is the top of that whipped soap. So to finish this off, I'm going to dust the top of this with even more mica. I have this mica spray bottle filled with that bronze color. And we're just going to lightly dust the top to give it the most beautiful autumn touch. part let's demo this whip soap I'm gonna use the one that didn't quite make it to the top but before I do that look how pretty that gradient is that half orange half white look oh this is such a beautiful product so to show you the consistency you just dip your hand in and it's oh it is so soft oh it's literally like smooth buttercream oh that's gorgeous so you take that much I'm gonna wet my hand and I'm just going to wipe or pass or just wipe my hands and you get instant <laughs> foamy bubbles. That is just beautiful, oh my gosh. And the lather is gentle, pretty large bubbles. I had a tiny amount of my hands guys and look at all this, look at all this foam and lather. I'm so happy that I decided to finally make whipped soap. I think this type of product is gonna do really well if I add it to my product line. It's one of those products that when you use it, you feel truly pampered. It really is just the epitome of self-care. <laughs> just to feel that soft soap on your skin. It's lovely. And my hands feel soft and not dried out after washing, which is so important when using soap. I feel like if you're gonna make a soap, try to make it as least harsh as possible to make the experience as pleasant as possible. If you guys are just excited as I am about fall being just around the corner, let me know in the comments below. And if you want the recipe for this beautiful, gorgeous, buttery whipped soap, then you can find that on my Patreon, which is linked down below, as well as over a hundred recipes. And it's also a place where I can answer your questions and we can talk about whip soap, other products, your business. <laughs> the community on there is so kind and so awesome. Thank you to everyone who chooses to support me on there. Okay, I am obsessed with how beautiful these whip soaps turned out. Please let me know in the comments how you think I did, whether or not you love making whip soaps, and if you sell this product in your own business and if it's a good seller or not. But that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. Until the next one, keep smiling, keep being awesome, and I will see you in the next video. Bye guys. Mmm, oh, smells so good.